Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. We got the hit makers in the house, Michigan Mike and Tasha T. Sizzle. We're ready to get this thing rolling. I got a ton of questions for y'all. I know y'all got a ton of answers for your boy. But before we get into any of that, we have to get a word from my sponsor. We're sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. You can get your Colombian and your whiskey blend coffee freshly ground and shipped to you by my lovely daughter, my entrepreneurial mind, th uh, entrepreneurial thinking minded child. Uh, again, we appreciate everyone who has supported us and the ones of you who continue to support us. Again, that's May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S-C-O-F-F-E-E.com. All right. And the Extra Point is also brought to you by Wolverine underscore comics TX. We buy, sell, and trade comics. Uh, we just finished up a big auction. Um, and then we'll be doing another one for about 300 books next month. Um, so I'll have the link on my Instagram and shout out to the Wakanda forever movie. It was a great movie. Um, and we were just talking about this offline, but first appearance of black Panther was 1966. So a little fun fact for y'all. Right on. Uh, I learned a lot um, in the, in the pre game role. Shouts out to y'all for that. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, we, we are winding down to the college football playoff. We just got a couple of weeks left on the college football season. Where has that time gone? It seems like Wait. just yesterday we were itching for some college football, and like a flash, it is gone. But thanks to our wonderful producer extraordinaire, we have for you the current rankings. The top five stayed intact. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU all undefeated, all holding serve. UT is holding serve at number five. But Tasha, get a good gl glimpse of this because when I come to you, I want to pull your big, beautiful face up on the screen. All right, so we got we got that picture there. I want to focus on number six and number seven this week because they really could shake up what's going on with the college football playoff. Look, <laughs> get yourself real. All right, Tasha. Last week you said something that really got my wheels turning because it could be absolute chaos if if your scenario is correct. LSU is sitting at number six. There's no guarantee that Georgia is going to just go into the to Atlanta and mollywop them next uh, in two weeks in the SEC championship game. If they do somehow win, and we've seen crazier upsets in college football, as a voter, Tasha, you have a vote. You're right down the street voting in Dallas. Can you leave out an SEC champion, even if they have two losses, Tasha? Yes. Yes. And okay. Coming in hot. No, no, because I thought I thought about this when you sent this to us Thursday. Now you know I usually don't read the script to Saturday morning, but I clicked on it and I said, "Hmm, you have LSU that has to leapfrog Tennessee, TCU, Michigan, or the fuck eyes. Oops, or the F eyes, or <laughs> if they were off and running." And let me break it down. If LSU upsets Georgia, Georgia's only going to fall to maybe three or four, correct? Correct. They're still in. If the the if Michigan loses, they're going to drop us out completely. We already know this. I if agree. the FIs lose because they're number two, they will probably put them at number four. So that leaves you. With TCU, if they stay undefeated and do what they're supposed to do, TCU could possibly be the number one team. Mm. So you have to move Tennessee up into that place. That's just the way I look at it. And, and, and does their, their blowout victory over LSU play into that as well? Yes, because they got the doors. I mean, again, it goes back to that whole LSU-Alabama thing. When, um, when they won it under Les Miles, Alabama blew them out. You know, they had two yeah. losses, but then they go to the SEC championship game, and, mm -hmm. and, and we know what happened there. Right. But there, I'm looking at a scenario that the SEC champion could possibly not be ranked if everything else falls suit. So you would vote Tennessee over LSU if that was to fall that way and keep Georgia in? Yes, I think a lot of voters would agree with you on that. Mike, let me come to you for team number seven, and that's the University of Southern California. 
They have one loss on the season on the road at a ranked Utah. They have two ranked games remaining today against UCLA, their rival, and next week against their rival, who was Sutton Surgeon, Notre Dame. It will be three ranked teams in a row if they were to make it to the Pac-12 championship and win. If they run the gauntlet and win these next three games, do you give them preferential treatment as a voter over a one-loss UT or one-loss Michigan or Ohio State? I would, yeah. Um, and wait, man, wait, this wait, is hold on. Before, you, before you keep going, Mike, ladies and gentlemen, that was not a typo. He said yes, and he's wearing a Michigan some Michigan gear. Mike, me and Tosh are going to give you a cyber hug. This is... <laughs> Um, We're so proud of you. <laughs> Go ahead, Prince. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think this is getting so milky for a four playoff team, and I think I mean that's why everyone's glad that it's moving up to a little bit higher because yeah. you got all these situations. And in my opinion, it should be the four or the five. You want to say that there's five power conferences? Let's keep it at four. Um, and those four champions need to be in. Um, based on other playoff, uh, I guess, statuses or, or other sports that they do, you know, like the, the whoever wins the conference is going to get in. And then the other ones, they just play to get in, right? So, like, right. In, in your instance, yeah, Georgia loses um, to LSU. But LSU, if they win, they're not going to win, let's be real. Um, but if, if LSU wins, they have to be in. And then the second play or the second team would be Georgia, in my opinion. Uh, USC, if they finish out, that's a strong resume to be in there um, over a Tennessee. Um, yeah, I, I, man, I feel bad for 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 Michigan at this point because their Big Ten is getting so much uh, hate right now as far they as are. having they like are. A, a weaker schedule. Yeah. But I mean, but we talked about like the other big win that no one's really talking about is Michigan win over Penn State when we just demolished them. And they're still a relevant top top ten ish team. Yeah, um, I think they're like they're, they're, they're in the top 11. ten. They're ranked. Oh no, they're eleven. 10. You're right. With with two losses to Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah. Right. So I mean, like that's a huge win that no one's really talking about because it's like one of the only ones. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I I think it all depends on these final weeks of like who wins by how much. Now this is where the points matter because if you see like if LSU just barely wins against Georgia then it's like okay well now we're we're definitely in a or if if Michigan barely win or sorry if Ohio barely wins by like two points or something like that like people are gonna want to see that game again especially if you get they get like 20 million views like that's huge um of course and the answer is that. no Langston no the Big Ten schedule uh strength of schedule isn't questioned every year normally no, 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 Michigan no. has a great out of conference schedule the only one who's never questioned is the FIs but everybody else out of conference schedule, in conference schedule as well, gets True. looked at. We can't help it that the West is crappy this this year. Right. I mean, absolutely crappy. Right. They, Iowa's not doing good. None of them on that side. Those are usually the only two that are worth a damn. Mm -hmm. No, no one else is really playing in the in the Big Ten, and that's not to the fault of Michigan or the FIs. Right. But my thing to Mike's point. Of course, in basketball, you got to field a, a tournament of sixty-four, so right. you got to have your conference championships champions in there. Right. Football can be a little bit different because you only have four teams, and I don't, LSU is not one of the top four teams. Right. And and there's so much so much of the schedule is devoted to conference play that you don't get the interconference battles like you get in college basketball, where Kentucky mm -hmm. will play a Duke. And then turn around and play against Zaga, and then turn around and play Michigan State, and then turn around and play Michigan. Like where you get a, a good sample size of the power schools playing each other before conference play. It's just not enough games on the schedule for college football to do that with these big conferences. That uh, so 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 to make sure that we have this all all wrapped up nicely in a bow, Tasha would would vote would not vote LSU in. Mike, you would correct? Yeah, if they're the SEC champion. I would go for the champions. Yeah. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see. Now another thing that that I found very interesting when I saw Charles Barkley was on. Let me make sure I get this correct. He was on the next round podcast with Barstool Sports, and he said that he has inside information that an SEC school is going to make a a surprise firing at the end of the season, and that he knows for a fact that that school is going to pursue Deion Sanders. 
He did not name the school, so we're gonna be penny and do it for him. Oh Mike, gosh. name that school. What school is Man, he that's talking easy. about? I mean, he he's a Auburn alumni. Like, why wouldn't it be Auburn? And they're struggling in the SEC. Like, that's a no-brainer. But the question got me thinking, like, okay, who else could it be? And I was thinking, like, I was looking at all the contracts and stuff. And Texas A&M, they're in a bad position. They're going to have that six coach for 10 Lost years. Like, right. that's – and losing $9, $10 million every year. Like, like they signed that contract at a wrong time for Texas A&M because we saw the transition of coaches being a new, different type of coach. Right. And especially the newer generation of kids, they don't right. like that old style. And you can see it in right. Texas A&M right now. Anyways – but I I was liking the Vanderbilt idea. And I was like, man, if you saw Dion was in some Nashville and just like turn that program around, because I think Dion for him, it's all about legacy. That would be cool. But it, it, it's, of course, <laughs> Auburn. Now, Langston agrees with you. He says Auburn. Tasha, name that school. As, as Mike was saying, I'm flying. I'm war damn eagle. I mean, even, even over Cadillac Williams, the, the star running back who's the interim coach now, they got the win over Texas A&M. Man, look, again, people <laughs> want Dion because he's a show. He's 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 a show. He is. And the and the interesting thing is Mike was saying about A&M, to go back to our discussion, what do I always say? A&M is skating without a stick. That is LSU's final game. What if? What if they do one for the Gipper is what you're saying? So you're not going to have a three. What if they lose, then still go to SEC championship, beat George, you're not going to have a three loss. SEC Absolutely team. not. That's a, That would be great news for Michigan. So everybody in Ann Arbor needs to be rooting for Texas A&M because that one loss may not kill us if you have a three loss LSU win, yeah, win the, uh, the uh, championship. Uh, interesting. Now, everything points to Auburn, but that seems like that's too – that that that's that's too easy of a guess. I but think who else is he talking to? Like Mike said, he is a Auburn alum. Who I mean, who else is he talking to? No one it, else is giving. No one is privying Charles to that information. Do you think that 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 Florida, the Florida's new coach, has done enough to keep his job, considering where you thought they would be to where they are today? He's done enough. I think after another year or two, if it kind of falls the way it it does he may be gone. You know, Florida's quick to pull those leashes after uh, Spurrier left. That is very true. That It's almost like the Miami Dolphins searching for a quarterback after Dan Marino. It's just been an endless cycle of, of, of mediocrity. Mike, you don't agree. You think Florida hasn't done um, enough, huh? Yeah, historically, Florida's been on trend with Michigan. Um, so Michigan up, you know, Florida's been up. I mean, we look at the Tebow years, too. Um, and as we were rebuilding with new coaches, Florida was rebuilding too. They were at the bottom. And so I think it was that, that game what was at two, three years ago at the AT&T stadium. That was a good matchup because we were starting to get our recruits again, both teams. And so that's why it was supposed to be a good game. But ever since there, like Florida has just been mediocre. And so, yeah, I, I don't think that they've done enough, enough there. They have a lot of good alum, great alumni there. Um, and so they should be expecting a lot more from Florida. Yeah, I'm not saying they should expect more. I think they're going to give him another year. And like after this year, I mean, again, look look at how Tennessee came out. You know, we were expecting the usual with the Florida, Tennessee, Florida to be, you know. Right, right. I was, yeah. I mean, they got that star quarterback. I think they're going to give the coach one more year. But I can't see Dion in Florida, even though he's taking recruits from FSU, that FSU <laughs> Florida State game going to be hell. Right. Now, Langston says he would be more effective at a Florida school. I would love to see him at the U. Uh, oh, that's, that's like Jim Harbaugh going to Ohio State. Right. That'll you might not ever set foot back in Michigan yeah. if you and do that. that. They, 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 already, school, they already burned his, his jerseys up in Tallahassee. They're going to burn his ass if he ever <laughs> at Now, let, let, now let, let's, let's dig a little deeper into this. Mike, is he worthy of an SEC opportunity or is he Jeff Saturday? Jeff Saturday. I'm just going to say it before Mike even says it. I, I think he can do it. Um, and I think he has a good position right now because he does bring money too. And I think some of these SEC schools are hurting uh, to be in that spotlight. And I think that's the main thing is getting those recruits and getting the money. So I think he could be effective. And Tasha, you disagree. I just don't think he – is ready for that caliber. I think he needs to take the Scott Frost route. 
Although Scott Frost, we don't want him in the Big Ten turning around that damn program. <laughs> Although Scott Frost went to Nebraska and, and and just basically just pooped everywhere. He did. But, I mean, I think going from HBCU ball, which of course we know talent does come out of HBCUs, I think he may need to start off at a smaller conference first. You see, so see how things are really, really done. Right. On, on a, I'm going to go back to the D1, to the, on a D1 level, and right. then maybe jump to a school. I mean, I, I believe Dion is capable of doing everything that he that he sets his mind to. And it's odd that he is as effective because usually great players don't make great coaches. You and and, and when you oh, just yeah. said that, it's funny you say that because Langston just chimed in right right in line with your spirit. Was Eddie George a failure at Tennessee State? Did his hire haunt uh, hurt the Dion the Dion hiring? Eddie no. George, Tennessee State University Tigers are a mess. And Eddie George just speaks to what you were talking about um, as far as players not making great coaches. That's been a disaster. Yep. And, that, and they that, only hired him because Jackson State hired Dion. And he said he'll do it. He'll get paid hourly. That that too. You know, Eddie would mm-hmm. get paid hourly, hourly for that. Now, what the one thing I think I'm Team Dion. So wherever Dion goes, I'm going. I follow him like LeBron James. But one thing about the Power Five schools that I think that he may not be ready for, just being totally objective, are the boosters. There's no boosters running telling him anything in Jackson State. He is the he booster, is the, booster. The, coach, <laughs> the president, the chancellor. Yeah. He's everything there. Well, mean, that's what I'm saying. If if he goes to like a Vanderbilt to where they have a smaller booster and they're like, we don't really know what to do with this wait here. A minute. Vanderbilt like has he, small, Vanderbilt has smaller boosters, but Vanderbilt got plenty. Oh yeah, I know that. That's what I'm saying. It would be perfect fit for him. Well, they would he, need only thing they would need Dion for is maybe to bring a few more fans. But I still don't he think he would do that. that. He would do that. He, he would, would do that, that, that. But that Vanderbilt crowd is kind of opposite of what the crowd that Dion would bring in there. It would be a culture shock. We'll, yes. we'll see how long it would take for them to adjust. But to, uh, but imagine Vanderbilt being a stepping stone for him. If, if that's what we're talking about, see, it gives him exposure to the SEC. All he has to do is have one, maybe two let upsets let say, throughout the year. There Vanderbilt is not the place you go to get on unless you are a real coach like Coach Franklin. If now, you if you are that caliber, because that what he did at Vanderbilt got him that job at Penn State. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Older coaches have gone to Vanderbilt and have just basically died. Career careers over. Derek and Mason, I, he went down with a sinking ship after yes, he. Uh, I don't think Franklin. Dion is ready for. That lack, first of all, that lacklusterness, and you cannot get the same recruits at Vanderbilt that you can at these other schools. Vanderbilt don't give a damn what star you are. They give a damn what's on that SAT and what's on that ACT. You have to get into Vanderbilt before you can get on that field. So that's what rid of those anyways. For Dion. <laughs> now, Lexi says that he agrees with you, Tasha, that the showmanship will not be tolerated. Vandy would not go for the videos. And the, here I go. Yeah, right. I know, you know, he's he's culture <laughs> in, but but Mike brought up a point that, that speaks to last week. Last week, Vanderbilt ended a 26 game SEC uh losing streak uh at Kentucky. It barely made a blip on the college football radar. If Dion yeah. Vanderbilt beats Kentucky, we they got game day next week. We're talking about it on first take, we're talking about it on undisputed, we're talking about it on the extra point. So Dion would get the benefit of let's say an upset or two is going to make national news and he's going to be on 60 minutes again. Um, Stiana says he might bring players to, he might, um, he, a key word might. Now Stiana, all the students ain't Elijah. Now all them ball, ball Shout out to Elijah. They ain't, they ain't straight A's Elijah's. They not, uh, they not, uh, uh, sneak, uh, Keyshawn. Like every child is not, every football player is not going to be that smart with that, level of talent to go oh, to and I just I just well, love Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt and their colors. I, I just imagine Dion there and then we're saying like let's let's revamp these uniforms. Let's get a sponsorship for this. Let's get Nike on these or something like that. And then just Vanderbilt coming with the gold and black and just like boom. I'm- but one but 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 Dion could have the same effect that uh Howard uh Schembechler did at the University of Miami when the when he first started the U. You start recruiting um better athletes you start supporting the culture as far as the current kids culture start being more identifiable with today's athlete then you start changing the demographics of who's in the stands 
where you'll have more people who used to go to TSU but, games come down to see Dion Vanderbilt. That would definitely happen. Recruit, it's harder to recruit true ballers. Now, you know, my friend Jamie Winborn, who led the SEC in tackles, very smart from a small town with Tumka, Alabama. But one thing Jamie was was smart. That's a hidden talent. We got smart you, brothers out there. Yeah, but the what the ones who say, I really want to get on, I want to do this, they don't care about Deion Sanders because they know they can go to a Georgia, they can go to a Michigan, they can go to these other schools. But yes. do they have Princess Hot Chicken at the stadium? That's what I want to know. They can, go to other other schools. Phenomenon. they can go to other schools and get on and be seen, whereas Jackson State is like, I'm, all the attention is going to be on me because nobody else is playing, paying any attention to other black schools. At D, D, F, FCS schools, th those athletes don't need a Dion. They don't need a Dion, but what they do need is an opportunity. Would you rather go to Arkansas or, or Auburn or LSU and sit behind three five stars? Or would you rather go play for Dion, play right away, get your NIL money? He's already got built-in sponsorship relationships. But I don't, but I, don't want to, but I don't want to be a starter on a lackluster team with no victories. Well, Keyshawn went pro. Keyshawn, they want to go pro. Ke yeah, Keyshawn. I mean, I'm not you, – you, you're missing my point. Dion cannot work at Vanderbilt. He's too – I remember – y'all remember that song, Who You With? Uh-uh, Who You With? Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt used to put on the screen, Who Are You With? That's what I'm saying. Dion is not going to fit the mold of a Vanderbilt. I don't care Dion or not. Players are not just going to say, I want to go to Vanderbilt to, so I can be coached by Prime. They're still going to say, I want to go to Michigan because I want to be coached by Harbaugh. I want to get um, coached by um, – What's his name in Alabama? That they're going to go that Vander D one players don't need Vanderbilt. But you, but, but, but Vanderbilt need might need Dion, so you can be on ESPN instead of ESPN Plus. D one <laughs> D one players do not need Dion Sanders. That's the that's the thing. That's why I'm saying he needs to go to a smaller conference, a conference USA, somebody that we're not watching. No, we right. know we, there is no not watching Dion. There it no. is. Now, okay, so so Langston says period. He put a period Langston, on this Langston conversation. Langston is feeling me. That is, that is true. They don't care. We tied, damn it. It's me and Mike versus Tasha and Langston. Somebody break and, the oh, tie. Van Vanderbilt cares about their name. It's always good for change, anything. you know. Right, right. We built on change, Obama. It's about I'll, change. I'll tell y'all a story, a personal story, but we can't say this on public. When we get off the air, I'll tell y'all. Oh, how you I know, I got my heart dropped. I was like, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked her out. And, no, another I mean, thing. Like, like, and another thing, Zap. No, Mike, you get the last word on this, and then we're gonna move on. I love talking college football with these two. I could do it for a whole show. Mike, last yeah. word on Hope on Deion Devandy. Yeah, in conclusion, it's probably Auburn. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What to do about nothing because it's probably Auburn. I <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. When you have offline conversations with these two, it's hard to get out of this in the pros because they keep making good opposing arguments. And it, me, I'm just, I just got my popcorn and my made James ready. Um, excellent conversation by you two. Now let's let's move on to the NFL because the NFL. Oh wait a minute, we got a tiebreaker. We got a tiebreaker. <laughs> you, uh, you can't listen to Sienna because her kid is is a nerd just like her. You can't. <laughs> he's not gonna have eligibility of issues when it comes to Elijah or uh, Aaliyah, so she don't count. Look, she's gonna be the first mom to have a son go number one in one sport and a daughter go number one in another sport. There you go. You, now we got you right there. Now you stop it, Langston. She, not yet. <laughs> Give her a few hours. <laughs> Stop it. Moving on in a hurry in my Michigan Mike voice. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the NFL playoff race is also heating up, not to be outdone by college football. We have the top seven teams pretty much starting to separate themselves, but there are a few teams out there that are still middling around that last wild card spot. And I'm coming right to you rapid fire. I'm going to give you a team. You tell me if they should hang in there and make that playoff run, or if they should have a seat. Defend yourself, Stiana. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and she said she gets the last word. There are other nerds that can play ball. 
She was one. She dropped 20 on, on uh, Shelbyville. Remember that? Sorry. She did. She dropped 20 on Shelbyville, and her mother got her leather jacket to win a mm-hmm. bitch. I don't forget nothing. All right. So, Mike, we're going to start with you in the AFC. New England is sitting at seven at five and four. Hang in there or have a seat, New England Patriots? I say hang in there. I mean, there's so many. I mean, it's going to be the, the, the main thing for the rest of this part of the show is because there's so many mediocre teams around this area era and we're section. Get into it's like, more of them. <laughs> yeah so i say hang in there all right tasha you up next the los angeles chargers everybody's media darling at the beginning of every year they're five and four big game against kansas city coming up sunday night hang in there and have a seat they didn't have a seat remember how mike was all ch- the chargers the chargers wait a minute say it again the what i, I said i said the, i said the herberts come on now he is a herbert fan he is no, I really think the Chargers are going to do this. I really think we were both like. <laughs> I don't believe in, in Justin Herbert. I just don't. I, I mean, mean, it's their defense, though. The real problem they uh, point against is, what, 228? That's like the highest out of all these teams you're talking about. But they got Khalil Mack. They got Derwin James. They got uh, Nick Bosa. Come on now. Those are defensive the coordinator road. then. Well, it, it, there you go. Taking up for, taking up for Herbert. There he is. Yeah, hey, that's all right. I take up for LeBron. Die on your hill, bro. Die on your hill. So, <laughs> so, so this wasn't your team, Mike, because I knew you would say hang in there. Are you saying hang in there? No. For the no, Chargers? No, no, I'm saying have a seat. <laughs> what? Don't let us talk I'm you out. You, I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying like Herbert has the talent, and I'm not even talking about the offense, but that defense is suspect. It is, and, and it has no reason to be giving up yards on the ground like that with that much talent at all three levels. But one thing that you that you want to keep an eye on, though, he gets both his starting receivers back Sunday night, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, so that could play a role in how this thing ends. Cincy, last year's AFC uh, champion, they're at five and four. Mike, they're going to hang in there and have a seat. Man, these Super Bowl teams have been the most surprised for me uh Bengals look like dog like dog water um they just recently started doing good so I'm gonna I'm gonna say have a seat okay just on an aside because he said that in passing can you imagine how much how much how dirty dog water is they licking that damn water with their tongue that they lick their booty with <laughs> they got the extra little pebble food that just got right, it's always food. a little grain of food in they water <laughs> all right my dog's bowls get washed every day so I don't know oh. But oh, the dogs, the dogs, dogs went to Vanderbilt. That's why. <laughs> right, because she because she gonna lick her booty to keep it clean. You know that. You know how dogs do. They sit there. They was too old to do that, and big boy's too lazy. Get that high leg up, big boy. Clean yourself. Yum 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 yum. <laughs> dog water. You, I knew that was gonna make headlines. <laughs> All right, it, Tasha. We coming back. Y'all in y'all bag today. Tasha, we're coming back to you. Final team in the AFC, Indy. They got Jeff Saturday now. They're only – Oh, that was quick. That was <laughs> quick. Uh, Lexus says this is exactly where they were last year. They are fine. They got the Tennessee Titans coming up a week from Sunday. So we shall see. Oh, boy. y'all. Are, do you agree, Mike, The Jeff Saturday should sit down? Yeah, yeah, I agree. That was I would, I would, I would have, re- I would have responded quick too. I don't, I don't like it at all because I'm you not, a, I'm not a fan of nepotism under any circumstances. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. And as everyone says, it has nothing to do with race, and that's not even my, my, my point. So, oh, a black like because I don't always think a black coach should always be coaching. But you do have right. sports assistant. should be meritocracy, so it should be right. based on merit regardless of race. I do agree. Right. With that. So I don't think that that is a good. First of all, it's not a good look because it basically shows you that the as we always say, the Rooney Rule ain't worth a damn because at the end of the day, the coaches are going to select who they want to select. Right. And you look at at, at white coaches on the on the uh, the coach, right. John Fox. They have plenty of experience as well. That man went to a Super Bowl. Like Dominique, like Dominique Foxworth said, he says, now they know how every black coach who is up for those same positions feels now. Well, throw on your dashiki and meet us downtown. We're going to have a march at 12. <laughs> well, not at 12. Michigan will be playing. Damn your march. Oh, uh, go on to the NFC. Uh, I'm feeling y'all's energy today. Um, let's start with number eight, because I think number seven, we all three agree that, that 
uh, not only will San Francisco hang in there, but they're not going to finish at seven. They're going to move up. We all agree at five yeah. and four. Yeah, Mike, I, Mike, giving eye contact. Mike, what well, you saying? No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah. Man. Okay, Christian McCaffrey <laughs> is looking mighty spry out there on the West Coast. He ain't well, going to no up every run. Not bad, does he? Hold on, but Elijah Mitchell spelling him is going to mean trouble. Last Sunday night, I was like, oh, my damn. They got two running backs hitting the crease. Mm -hmm. and, you still got, and you still got Debo. Yeah, that's trouble. That's trouble. Um, So, okay, we agree there. But how about number eight? Mike, let's start with you, the Washington uh, Command Skins. They, they, uh, they're five and five. They just beat Philly. Hang in there and have a seat. I think I have a seed. I think though the the NFC wild card is definitely a lot more pictured than the yeah, AFC. Yeah, it is. It uh, is. You got some top teams that are like, okay, well, you got a you got a seven and two Giants, and then you got a five and five Washington team. I I mean, right now the Giants are sitting better than Washington is. Right, and it's going to be hard to get three teams out of any division in that conference. Yes, my, yes, I felt the skepticism too. I don't think he sold on. We'll on let it play out. Frisco. We'll let it play out. You know, I don't think he sold quite on Frisco. We shall. See, Dallas I mean, don't want no more parts. Minnesota to start their down, that's a uh, downward spiral. I'm so but, glad. I mean, okay, so like for 49ers, all my thing is like you live and die by the run. You stop their run game, that's what I want to see. I want to see a team come in there and but just you, stop the run. If you stop the run game, you still got Debo out there. Mm, okay. No, you're not going to be okay with Debo because he's better what? than anybody. He got to get the ball somehow, right? He got to get the ball he's somehow. He's on my fantasy team, and he's not getting the ball, damn it, because Christian McCaffrey <laughs> came out there taking all his touches. Let him – free Debo. <laughs> <laughs> I need – because Debo is, is the most versatile player in the entire league, and he yeah. runs but angry. He, he doesn't have to be the running back this year. And, 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 and I guess to your point, Tasha, just to make things balanced, that does make him fresh for the playoffs because he got dinged up every other game last year with all those touches. So, yeah. Now, number nine, thank God uh, the Coop is out. He'll be back next week. The Atlanta Falcons, the, the marching Mariotas at four and six. They're only one game behind Tampa Bay, Tasha. Hang in there. Have a seat. Let me get this chair for you. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Sit your ass down right here. Well, sit your ass down. Mike, and me in front of all these people. Okay, don't embarrass your parents in front of nobody. You finna get towed up, Mike. <laughs> they the only one game behind Tampa. Hang in there. No, no, have a seat. No, Mike, we got burned two Thursdays ago with Marcus Mariota. Did you see that throw he threw off his hip when he was already sacked and he threw the ball up and it got intercepted? That's yeah. the kind of sh you know what that, that gets you shipped off to another the franchise. Yep. That was embarrassing. Marcus Mariota, sit down. Um, and last but not least, a, a tricky team, Arizona. They're one game behind San Francisco and play them on Monday night. They look <laughs> a lot better with, with DeAndre Hopkins. Then y'all the one is laughing, the other one giving me the black lip. I guess we all in agreement, right? Uh, I yeah, ask. I mean to, to Tasha's point, I mean it depends if they have a MW2 tournament <laughs> going on. And it, you know, as soon as that game came out, Arizona just went. Stay <laughs> in esta silla. Sit down in this chair. All right, wait a minute, Tasha. One more again for our Spanish-speaking friends. Siéntate es esta silla. <laughs> you only gonna get there right here at the extra point. I am loving that they are in their bag. All right, Natasha, you said that you waiting on Minnesota to to go ahead and drop. Now, you know who may agree with you? That's the city of Las Vegas. We're going to preview the Cowboys and the Vikings. Now, the 6-3 and three Cowboys are at 8-1 and one, um, Minnesota. Now, Mike, this was your question, but Tasha brought this up, so we're going to bring her into this. I want to hear from both of y'all. One thing, y'all both been to Vegas. We've all been to Vegas, and there's one thing that we know about Vegas. They do not troll. They don't put lines out just to be to, to go viral. They put lines out to make money. Mm -hmm. They have Dallas as a one and a half point road favorite. Tasha, mm -hmm. do you think they're buying into your theory that you're just waiting on the other shoe to drop from Minnesota? Yeah, because you got cousins uh, duck a jab out here with his shirt off and iced out <laughs> with his gold, with his jury, with his Mr. T kit on, looking like a fool. I mean. You ain't good. Like he's out here really showing off. Like he just, yeah, I'm the, yeah, 
when he no. threw those interceptions and the defense bailed him out with that fumble recovery against ball against <laughs> Buffalo. That, that was so fluke. Now, so, now Langston, look at Langston. Already, Langston, Mike has worn you down over the over the, the years. The, go ahead, me. Tasha. So you so you're taking yeah, Dallas at the point? Langston uh, got the line up on his profile, but you're looking clean. Still got all your head is held. Yeah. Where's right. that barber at? Right, right. And can he draw me one in? I'm going to go home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Uh, can I get a Jamie Foxx special? <laughs> get you some box of Beijing and take it with you. <laughs> Mike. Mike, <laughs> do you agree with Vegas? What's Vegas doing here? What are they trying to tell us that we don't see? It's, it sounds like a, a trap bit. Um, yeah, all, all points are, are, are all spreads are pointing to Dallas win. Um, you gotta think like these it's, it's in Minnesota too, right? Yes. It's in Minnesota. Yeah. So that's, that's an instant three points right there. So they're technically saying that they'll, they'll Cowboys will win by like five. Right. Um, but I, I'm taking Minnesota. I don't see, I'm with Langston here. I don't see how they, they, they rebound from that. Um, Green Bay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a. I'm going to say Minnesota. Since you broached Green Bay and, and, and since uh, Mr. Glenn checked in and said Dak is the black Kirk Cousins. Y'all, this Dak, Dang. this Dak hate well, it's Kirk Cousins against Kirk Cousins. Stop, Tasha, don't you encourage him. Don't you encourage him. Don't, you encourage, don't encourage him. Now, Mike, let me ask you this from last week. You saw the game because you trolled me about it and I was still mad. I, would, I wasn't ready to talk about the game yet because that was yeah. a, a fiasco of epic proportions. Who's more at fault for that loss last week in Green Bay? The defense or Dak? Mm, I would say, dang, that's tough because defense wasn't stopping anybody. Nobody. <laughs> and, exactly. And, and I think Dallas had the good lead. So I'm going to say the defense. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get Dak off the hook for throwing that late interception. I, I think mean, that was yeah. the Rams' fault. Tasha, it goes, was it the it defense? Down to the coaching. I'm blaming defense, which I'm surprised I'm doing, and the coaching, of course, which is always in question, which is why McCarthy's ass is going to be Siete Day <laughs> in Esta Silla while <laughs> Sean well, Payton is going to so be next week we're going to say next week we're going to say Dion to Dallas? He coming oh, to the next season. Oh, my gosh, Deion no, that's Dallas? That's Catch us next goes. week. Catch us next week. They are killing uh Dakota Rain Prescott in the comments. My goodness. So you going with Minnesota, Mike, correct? Yeah, yeah. I got Minnesota. Oscar, is Justin Jefferson the best wide receiver in the NFL? Pretty close. If not him, then who? I'm going for Waddle. And I'm going, and you think Waddle is the second, is the second fastest on that team. Um, I like Waddle, and of course, I like Cheetah. I like AJ Brown, but I really like Justin. Je I, lo I love him. I love that fourth down catch last I mean, week. I mean, I'm going for Watson, you know, that new uh, Green Bay wide receiver. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a rookie. Oh, he put in work against Dallas and Tennessee. I'm sick of I picked, I picked him up, too. And everything. Wait a minute, Mike. You said you picked him up. Good pickup by you. Yeah. Yeah. He's bench, got five so. touchdowns in, in two games. I think it's an right. NFL record for a rookie. Oh, Langston is going with Tyreek. No love for Stefan Diggs. Anybody, huh? Stefan got down two against uh, Minnesota last week. Now, Stephon is starting to get th those career enders. When you constantly staying injured, that's what he's doing. He's getting a lot of injuries now. Yeah. He's got a high usage rate too. You can't get dink and dunk a receiver all the way down the field. I think, I think these I think these older receivers are starting to figure out that they're getting older and recovery time is a little bit longer and you got to do a little bit more. Uh, I mean, so I think is still a threat, I, I can attest but, to that. As yeah. a 38 year old, I can attest to to not healing as fast. At, what what I, what I do? What I say? Um, <laughs> Tasha, moving on. Um, now, <clears throat> Ezekiel Elliott is scheduled to make his return this week. They're hopeful that he'll be back after missing the last two games with a knee injury. In his absence, Tony Pollard rushed for over 100 yards in both games. Your offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, what's your role for Zeke if he's ready to go this week? First of all, I'm going to tell Zeke, put that belly shirt back on. Put, the, put your belly shirt back on. <laughs> that wasn't no belly we saw just then, no. <laughs> 
So oh, I couldn't. I didn't go up far. It was only so far. No. I go in there. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh God. What What would be your role for for for, for Zeke? I mean, I think because old Jera has already said it is going to be Zeke or Bust. You can kind of ease him back into play, but also one thing Jerry hates to do, Jerry, as much as he talks about winning, he hates to win. If Pollard he is does put feelings you, over 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 yes, uh, football, he if does. Pollard is giving you the best chance to win and be effective with that run game, I think you need to put Pollard in and then just ease Zeke in, like goal line situations or you know or something like that. Reverse the roles, basically. I'm so proud that you did that without taking a shot at the Cowboys. That was very objective. I did. That's what belly. Sh that's what belly shirt was about. You see that flatness? You too can have flatness. All you gotta do is just is drink gingerbread juice and whatever else they sell over there in the DR. Mike, what's your role for for Z this week? Do you put it back in yeah. as a starter like Jerry's gonna do? No, I, was, I. You know he needs to get out of the way. No, but um. It, it is definitely a different offense when he's not in. And uh, no, I just, I totally disagree with that. <laughs> the, no. Their secondary is going to get torched. But uh, no, I, I think Zeke has to, they have to be able to, to, to sprinkle him in. And I think they'll just split it, the carries 50 50, because you can't just have them as a power back because then they're going to know, okay, they're going to do, right. they're going to do an ISO play. Like they're going to just run it down or single back. Um, yeah, I, I think they just got to make it even. Now, Langston makes a good point that he is much better in the passing game as as a protector for Dak. So maybe he'll give Dak a little more time to throw his next pick. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to I was trying to mute and I hit leave. <laughs> I thought you was done talking about the Cowboys. I was gonna respect that. No, like, the 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 moving back. on in a hurry. In a, so we're gonna move on in a hurry with that. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we gotta give Coop who, who's at work right now. Shouts out to Coop. He won the last survival round. So I think everybody's got a victory under their belt now. So now it's time to really ratchet it up. Everybody's back at play. And I'm stepping stepping up my game. I'm up in the ante with, with the survivor picks this week. I got Tennessee Titans over the Green Bay Packers. Mike, who you got? I got the Eagles over the Colts. Oh, wait a minute. Him Nobody caught that. Too. Nobody even caught that. That was a horrible dad joke then. That, that was I picked Tennessee. They already played. Nobody, Mama, did you get that? Nobody got I, that. As I was putting up the schedule, I was like, they playing again Sunday? <laughs> yeah, no. No, he already picked it before. I mean, I can attest to it. So he got he had the Tennessee winning. So <laughs> no, I got a pick coming that's gonna shock y'all. Yeah, she did a Joe Button. Hey, Tasha, you did a Joe Button. <laughs> After the Migos interview, cut. We out of here. Yeah. All right. Right. Tasha, who you got? Oh. I want to take the Bills over. I, uh, I don't know. I want yeah, Buffalo to, keeps keeps on getting you out of the paint now. Buffalo I know. Every time I go with them, they I'm going to take the Chiefs over the Chargers, and I think that could possibly be an upset. I think that could possibly be an upset, too, with all of uh, the Chargers weapons back. And the Chargers, um, Chargers are listening to you, too, so be like, hold on. Hold my beer. Right. They like – see, this is – she's trying to motivate them. She said that they suck. Then she turned around and picked them. Uh, but no, that's, a, that's a trap them. game. It is a trap game for Kansas City, and I'm rooting for, for the Chargers because we need to gain a game on KC. I'm going with the Saints over the Rams. I'm putting on my brown paper bag, and I, I, with no Cooper Cup, what the hell is Matthew Stafford going to do with no Cooper Cup? Come on, second line. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, put your shoulders in it, Mike. Come on, second I line. Looking, I, was, I was looking at over here. You can still you can still get shows in it while you're looking. Come on, second line. Y'all didn't hey. know you had no rhythm, did you? Y'all didn't think you had no rhythm. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, something tells me we're going to see that Something tells me. If you're watching online, go ahead and start bouncing. It's Saturday morning, damn it. Hey, what else you going to do? Um, All right. So, to recap, we have Mike with the Eagles flying, flying, flying over those Colts. I hope you're right. We need everybody in the South to take an L. Tasha's going with KC in the Sunday nighter. You're going to make us wait to the last game of the mm -hmm. night to pick a winner. And, and, and I'm not going to know till in the morning. That game Who's Coop's pick? I will, oh, I forgot to get Coop's pick. Coop. Uh, 
Wait a minute. They said, Mike, where are your maracas? <laughs> you don't use maracas. Ain't got none in here, yeah. <laughs> it's brass band. Give them, time. Give them time. They'll be somewhere. They'll be tri- vacationing somewhere after the baby where they got maracas mm-hmm. on here. I'm pretty sure yep. of that. Um, we'll get Coop's pick to make sure that that um, we get it before game time. So we got the Chiefs, we got the, the Eagles, and we got the Aints over the Rams. How mm. about that? Mm. Now, and they're only a three-point favorite? Ooh. You weren't supposed to put that in. I wanted it to sound like an upset. Ooh. Damn, Mike, you always snitching. I mean, KC is only five, so. Man, I got the Rams on that one. you going with the – okay, then. Well, then double or nothing. No, 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 no. Well, Lucy saying, wears like, a bag over their head next week to open the show. <laughs> no, we ain't doing that. <laughs> oh, you this. this is a oh, moneymaker right here. This is a moneymaker. Oh. Okay. Keep keep it right. Keep it tight. We're going to get you in touch with Langston's Barber. We're going to have you ready for the holiday. But it's been a while. It's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you in, the, in my table. Left you. Boys. Left you. Without a top five to step two, step two, step two, step two. Step two, step two. Step two. So it's yes. back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tasha T. Sizzle's top five. We missed your top five. Now, Tasha T. Sizzle, your top five has a holiday feel this week. Since Thanksgiving is right around the corner, mm-hmm. the world, America, K-U-H, America, wants to know your top five Thanksgiving dishes. I'm getting and hungry these, already. And these are in order. Can you guys believe it's what? in order? Oh, so you got conviction on this one, huh? Dressing. Not stuffing, because I don't know what the hell some stuffing is. Let's get this out the way right now. What's the difference yeah, what's the between difference? dressing and stuffing? I think stuffing is the bread, and you put it in the turkey before you cook it. Right, but wait a minute. Well, how did your daughter get her five already? That was within seconds. Get all of this on her on her menu. Y'all hear me? So she, has, she has dressing, so I have dressing, because the reason she has dressing is because everyone in our family can make dressing. So she's never had... She, we, we know what bad dressing is, so that's why she put dressing. Okay, all right. So you got dressing one. Let's let's hear. You had greens, but I um, like collards. Collards is on my list. Yes, I got broccoli casserole, but only the way my grandmother made it. Because I've had some broccoli casseroles, and it wasn't casserole. It, it, it was <laughs> it wasn't what? <laughs> it wasn't casserole. It was nasty. I can't stand you. Next, one of the things that this is a new one. It's not new, but this is something new that we start putting at our tables. Them damn Sister Schubert's rolls. Yes, Sister Schubert. Yes, yeah. I like to call them Sister Shoe Bears. They, they are better than the Hawaiian rolls. That, that yes. used to be number one. Those Hawaiian rolls. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Now, my number one, and it is very controversial, and I know two people that will agree with me is Stiana and Tiffany on oh, this. Oh no! Don't say it. Yes. Chitlins. 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 <laughs> now we see why she wasn't deterred by that dog crap being in that van. <laughs> You've been cleaning chitlins all morning. Chitlins with some hot sauce. And the Mike, way have Miss you Tiffany, ever had chitlins? Yeah, I have at my dad's. The way Tiffany Mike, and I you, like You're blacker than me. I've never had chitlins. My my mama wasn't cooking no chitlins in the house. We didn't, I never had neck bones. I never had hog mog. I, I never, never had, had pig's feet. Mold. I've never had pig's feet. My mama said we free now. <laughs> we go to the grocery store. Oh, well, that's what she said. I think she just didn't want to cook them. But she that's what she would guilt us with when we free. We've been emancipated. We don't have to just eat whatever slop just left on, on the table. But a lot of people love chitlins, though. I'm just... Y'all know my mama ain't. Y'all bowl on that chitlin circuit, so hell, I thought you. Were- <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got down on that chitlin circuit. Mike bowling anchor this year. Stepped his game up. <laughs> All right, Mike. Is there anything that, that she left off the list? I like some homemade mac and cheese. That's just me. Yes, that's number one on the list. And thank you, Denise. Denise, I'm not missing nothing. All right, Mike. Anything else you, you got on your list? Mm, no, I'm missing something didn't. very critical. Uh, she says you stuffing. Have some cranberry sauce, but I don't like cranberry turkey. sauce. Turkey. She has the uh, cranberry, uh, uh, green bean casserole. That's always green good. bean casserole is one. Yeah. Um, Where's the ham? 
You, you, no, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't like ham, ham in the house. Hey, you you don't eat ham, Mike? Nah, I'm good. I'll pass. You eat chitlins, but don't eat ham. No, I didn't say I eat it. I said I've tried it. What did you get it down? How, did you have how many forkfuls? No, I, I I think I threw up twice that day. Oh, okay. I was going to say, did it go down greasy? Was it slippery? Like, what's the problem? <laughs> no, wait a minute. We got another vote for no ham. See, I told you. Wait, what? Well, Sasha also doesn't eat a lot of pork. Well, we can tell she don't eat pork because because of the outfit she wear. That that ain't got yeah. There ain't no she ain't no porky pig. All right, like me over here down in the whole thing of. <laughs> no deviled eggs? No deviled eggs? Anybody? Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deviled eggs. You know we have deviled eggs. I know. That's why I was like, Mike, you're missing something. The deviled yeah, eggs. That's more an appetizer. I'm thinking like a meal. Like, you know. But that goes it all with counts your meal. Thanksgiving. Huh? Deviled eggs go with your meal. You don't eat those first and then say, oh, let me eat the food. You put that oh, on the you, side. You, you should... You cut it. You should come board. over next time. Then you, the, those are already done. People start picking at them. Like, hey, oh. Stacy oh, no. and the Hossos, they, they make Black Thanksgiving. They do. They they it, you you won't know you won't know the racial dynamic of that household by just eating the food. They throw down and everything was seasoned <laughs> to perfection. Oh. This son can even cook. That gummit. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> come on, Denise. Denise, no ham or deviled eggs. Oh man, she'll be at my grandma's house. Like, Mama, can you come pick me up? <laughs> yeah, See, I'm not a big fan of anything that contains mayo because I hate mayo. Then yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that is fair. If you don't like mayo, let's just let's just cancel the whole dinner with the devil eggs. Got you, Mike. Your dessert of choice. Gotta have dessert I, on Thanksgiving. I like um, cherry cheesecake. Oh, uh, y'all cherry got cheesecake money. or uh, apple pie. Okay, but y'all got money. A la mode though. Okay, a la mode. Okay. No potato salads with or without no, raisins? No. No, potatoes. that's more of a summer barbecue thing. We eat I'll eat mashed potatoes and potato salad. Right in the peach black house. Okay, peach cobbler. Okay. We got yeah. we got the comments checking in. Sweet potato pie all day. I was wondering. I'm a sweet potato pie. Girl. I'm more of a chest pie. I love chest pie as well. Um, I'll just take chest pie cake, chocolate pie, fudge pie, as long as it's a la mode, like Mike said. As long as I got a little scoop of cream on top of it, um, yum, 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 yum. And we're going to – next week we got so many great games to, to preview. Um, but one that we won't be able to get to will be Dallas versus the Giants. Let me get y'all's way too early thoughts on that colossal mm. NFC East matchup on Thanksgiving Day. Mike, do you think the, the Giants exact revenge? <sighs> it's rare that Cowboys lose on Thanksgiving Day. And I know they've done it recently, but – I I don't see them losing to the Giants. No. Okay, I, so I got, we got, one I got the Cowboys winning. Town. What about you, T Sizzle? You think the Giants can exact revenge with a healthy Saquon? I yeah, I was gonna pick that. I was gonna say Giants Ooh. over boys. Okay, all right. Well, um, you know what time it is. It's almost time for those shout outs. Is a fact. In fact, it is time for those shout outs. But before we do the shout outs, I just want to to go back on a couple of of notable. Uh, anniversary dates. Today, we want to wish a happy birthday, a happy 66th birthday to Warren Moon, the man my mama said should have been my daddy. Um, Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I probably still have my TWA. It's the drink of the moon. Hey, I, I think I missed a story to that one then. <laughs> Where's that my mama story? loved some Warren Moon growing up. She said that would have been your father. My dad is sitting there like, oh, really? All right. Um, He was a great football player too, but not quite Warren Moon. And 18 years ago today, Tasha's team destroyed the NBA. 18 years ago today, Ben Wallace did to push her around the world and started the malice in the damn palace. He only got a six day. You're not going to fuck way. a boom, boom, Big Ben. It was those rowdy fans that started throwing them cups and whatnot at a world be free. What's his new name now? Metal World Peace. Okay, now Langston says, shout out to Shaniqua Robinson's family. Talk to your children about friend choices because I'm Samuel L. Jackson in a time to kill. Okay, now, yes. um, speaking of friend choices, oh, I ain't yeah, gonna lie, yeah. I hit the jackpot. We got trees with her banana pudding. I got Tasha T. Sizzle, Michigan Mike, a combined 75 years of absolute blissful friendship. I have no complaints to make. 
thank God for the friends that fell in my lap. But Langston, I remember that story, and uh, he's absolutely right. Mike, mm -hmm. who are you shouting out this week? I'm shouting out again. McKinney Lions upset. They oh, uh, beat. Uh, done, huh? They beat Jesuit um, last night, and now they play. Oh. They're the area champs. Now they play uh, South Lake Carroll in um, the old Ranger Stadium, and that'll be yeah. next week. Now, Tasha always thought their name was Jay Suit, so I'm glad he said their name before me. Come on, it's Jesuits. <laughs> I thought it was Jay Suit. Um, Tasha, who are you shouting out this week? <laughs> okay, mine is mine is a little somber, and of course, y'all know I, I will I will go political and not give a damn. Well, that's my, why we love you. But my shouts out go to um, Deshaun Perry, Lavelle Davis, yes, yes, Devin yes. Chandler, yes, and also uh, what was the the one that survived? Mike, Michael Hollins. I, I wrote it yes. down. Michael Hollins yes. and the other student that's unnamed that yes. survived as well. Right. I don't care what goes on in your life. I'm tired of people with the narrative of he was picking on me, so I decided to go and get a gun and and shoot them. That's what they're saying, something with a hazing incident. Grow the fuck up. You are 18, 19, 20 years old, and you're still, people are so sensitive these days about everything. You say something, something somebody doesn't like, they're mad, they're crying. They want to run home to their mom and dad. They want to go home. They want to get a gun. They want to shoot people. Stop being so damn sensitive. Then this also goes to gun control. He went to that gun store twice before he was allowed to get a gun. First time he was underage. The second time he didn't pass the background check. So the third time he miraculously passed the background check? I got a fish full of cash. And yeah. I am a gun proponent. I owned guns when I was in the States. My husband was a firearms instructor for the right. police. And I believe in the right to bear arms as well. We had guns all over the house. Yeah. And he didn't even like guns, but we had them. I just want better gun control. Be more, police that shit more so you don't continue to have incidences like this. Like very, you can, like, very like, tragic. Very like tragic. Like Tiana said one time, you can't go to school. You can't go to church. You can't go to the grocery store. You can't go anywhere because you got people who are sliding through the cracks to go and are able to purchase guns that they don't, that they really don't need. And also in the state of Tennessee, now they don't even require you to have gun training. So what if the, the thief breaks into your house? What if the thief breaks into your house and you try to protect yourself as you have every right to do and you got a gun jam? And you don't know how to clear the jam because you ain't never been to a gun training class to know how to actually operate that weapon. So right. again, I need people to thicken up this skin. I don't know what's going on with this generation. They're being raised to be baby. They're not being raised to be tough. Everyone needs to get to, I've never seen so many cases of people, oh, they're bullying me. In our days, it was no such thing as bullying. They was just effing with you. But we weren't out here saying, let me go get somebody and pap pap them. Right. And I think we all can safely say we grew up with guns in the house. And the we knew where they were. The parents didn't play that, go touch the gun stuff. Yeah, don't if touch you that gun. You got at school. You just got into your fight, went home, went back the next day, and went play basketball again. Um, but it's a I got into several there. fights at old PCH. And you know this. I wasn't yes. saying, let me, go, let me go home and get my grandmother's cap pistol and bring it up to the school. Yeah, that, that it's it's a different day and age, and 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 I really I really pray for all of the fam the families of, of, of that tragedy, and I pray for the families with with children that you have to like constantly counsel and, and be with every single day. Right. So my hats off to the to the parents that's getting it right. I'm gonna give y'all a shout out today for the ones that's getting it right, and for those parents, it's just that's just an unthinkable tragedy. So, um, yeah, um, and on that note. Uh, there's a lot of college football to get to here in about an hour. So you know how we get down. We'll see you in six days and about 23 hours or so. Until then, Mike said, go blue. Go blue. It's cool, but you got to be the greatest. Take hey, me to Broadway. Mike, put your shoulder in it one more time for the Moroccans. Fly me to Vegas. The hey. best. Can't now faith this. Come on, Trina. Hi. Am, oh, am I doing it? Am I, am I no, doing Mike, it? Mike, not doing it. Mike, that's not it. <laughs> That's Mike, that's gonna make the real. <laughs> no! <laughs>